so thanks for that one, America. Was it 22? I don't know if also a concept of time. He doesn't even drink coffee. So today we are going to talk about 10 ways Europe has been Americanized in the last decade. If you want me to do a flip it and reverse it, do let me know below in comments. We'll talk about how America has been Europeanized. I think it's cool how we take the good stuff and we adopt it from each other and hopefully leave the negative stuff. In an ideal world, we'd all turn out great, but it's not an ideal world. That's a story for another day. I got real dark there. From American companies opening branches throughout Europe and people coming to live here from America to more advanced tech changing things globally and bringing us similarities. There have been a lot of changes in Europe in the last decade and I bet you don't know all of them. So let's get into it. The first big difference is you've probably got a stereotype in your head about how Europeans always dress so smart. Not so much anymore. Well, people do dress smartly, but also we've adopted the casual attire of our American friends. It is not uncommon to see people walking around in tracksuits during the day. Also, their workplace attire is way more casual jeans and trainers, especially in the tech industries. And honestly, that one's kind of a relief because while it is nice to get dressed up, sometimes you just want to wear your baggy pants, you know? You want to wear your baggy pants and your sloppy t-shirt and just go out. Not all the time, presentation is important but some of the time it's just nice to be casual so thanks for that one america we love america we love america the next thing that we have adopted from america is slang and buzzwords and this one is mm, good and bad. There are certain words that just everybody uses all the time. You know the ones like triggered, Karens, and then Generation Z have their own thing going on with words. But the point is, thanks to social media now, we have found a common language among English speaking countries anyway. No cap, see? Slay! Slay! I got that from you, America. I'm down with the cool kids and the buzzwords. <laughs> and next, huge difference is that TV shows, films, and musicians break at the same time in Europe as they do in America. That was not the case 10 years ago. Thanks to the internet and streaming sites mainly, now we get stuff in real time. When I was a kid, I remember when you'd watch a TV show, you never got to watch it in sequence. You never got episode one, episode two, episode three. We'd get it on our RTE channel, Radio Telefish Erin. We'd start with episode five and then they'd just pull out whatever episode came to mind, episode 12, and nothing ever made sense. So you had to watch it episodically, whereas now you can follow a storyline a lot better. And of course you can binge watch series, so that's cool. But also when movies come out now, especially big blockbuster films, they'll release them the same day in Europe as they do in America. Whereas again, I remember as a kid, you'd hear about a movie coming out in America and it being a big hit and we wouldn't get it for like another couple of weeks. The first time I experienced real time enjoying a TV show and my first experience of internet reaction and discussions of a TV show in real time was Breaking Bad. So everybody was looking forward to the next episode and we were all getting it globally at the same time. And that was really cool. And like I was saying, musicians as well. Musicians can release their music on Spotify or whatever it is and it'll go on TikTok and everybody will hear it and then it'll become a big hit globally as opposed to just having it released in one continent. Again, I remember as a kid, they would have a band try and break America. So some hugely successful band. I remember, for example, I think even One Direction. One Direction might have been the last band that I know of to do it. They were hugely successful in Europe and then they flew to America and they did like a whole tour of trying to break America, which was very successful for them. But now you can literally hop on a flight and it takes a couple of hours and you're there and then you can fly back to Europe and fly in between just in the space of a couple of hours. There's a lot more international flights and like I said, everything is released at the same time. The next thing that we have taken on from the United States, and I can only categorize this as smartphone face. Now, if you haven't heard of smartphone face, I'm going to explain it to you. In a nutshell, smartphone face refers to people who look as though they're from the modern times, AKA 2023. There are a couple of ways that people think that smartphone face came about. 
Some people blame it on the cosmetic surgery industry saying like since the Kardashians came, everybody wants to look the same with big lips and high cheekbones and all that stuff. Another thing is people think literally people looking down at their smartphone all the time has made the jaw and the skin start to go in a certain direction. And then there's also the theory that, hey, it's just another trend. People in the 20s all looked similar because they styled themselves similarly. But smartphone face definitely started as an American phenomenon and now people in Europe have it too. The next thing, and this is definitely a good one, is working from home. I'm doing it right now. And that is in large part thanks to my Patreons, patreon.com slash Diane Jennings. Do check it out if you want to support the channel. For the cost of a cup of coffee, you will get extra videos and lots of other perks. But working from home actually started with a NASA engineer in the United States. In 1973, he came up with the idea of telecommuting. He proposed that some people could work from home at least part of the week and then come into the office the other part of the week. Five IBM employees were chosen to try this out for the first time and it was pretty successful, so much so that by the 80s they upped the amount of people who were allowed to do it. By 1983 the experiment was expanded to two thousand people and so on and so forth until loads of people were working from home and of course the uh what do we call it these days the plague of 2020 2021 20, 22 was it 22 i don't know it's also a concept of time if you told me right now that it was november 2042 i would believe you that had a lot more people working from home and that made it so that bosses could understand and appreciate that a lot more employees could work from home. Of course, now they're trying to get them all back in the office because, you know, huh? I don't know why they just want them back in the office. Some places that makes sense, but other places I'm like, you're just, just doing it for the sake of doing it. Some people like working from home. Some people like being in the office, but I definitely think most jobs not all. But most jobs should allow a degree of flexibility if you are doing a good job of getting your job done. The next big thing that we have adopted from America is trends and challenges. So of course there's fashion, but there's also things on the internet like TikTok challenges, YouTube challenges, as well as social trends. A lot of this does incorporate political ideologies, but a lot of them are coming from America. European people are picking up things that are happening as social trends in America and bringing them to Europe. For example, there's this trend going on right now, water talk, where American women started to get their water and add like all kinds of syrups and stuff to the point that like the debate online is, is it even still water at that point? But of course they were doing it online and so European women and started to do it too. That's a pretty harmless example, but like, of course it goes deeper than that. Moving on. Holidays have become way more commercialized, but they've also become way bigger celebrations. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, well, that happened. Halloween, Christmas, Easter, those are the big ones. They used to be way more religious and now they're just way more about the money. Halloween, for example, we used to always make our costumes growing up and now kids would be embarrassed to make the costume. They have to go buy the costume. Christmas is another one. It starts before Halloween these days. But I do love Christmas and I love the fact that we do celebrate it a little bit more Americanly. It's more bigger and there's way more stuff to do and more fun activities. Next up, coffee culture. I cannot tell you how much we have adopted American coffee culture. American coffee culture has a huge emphasis on speciality coffee and brewing style. It has had a massive impact on the European coffee scene. This one, to be fair, I think started more than a decade ago, probably with the television show Friends. But since then, we have gotten Starbucks galore. They're on nearly every corner throughout Europe. And it's brought to us that you can have more than one type of coffee. When I I was a kid I think there was just decaf and regular. I think you could like obviously get espresso, cappuccino, the big ones but all this like frappuccino and all that stuff that's from America. Also drinking coffee on the go nope. never a thing in Europe before the last decade. The to-go cups have become 
freaking huge. Even teenagers love them now. They're like such a trend. My niece asked for a Starbucks to go cup for Christmas. She didn't actually get one. She got like everything else on her list, but we didn't actually get her one of those. I can't remember why, but we didn't. She doesn't even drink coffee. But again, I remember as a kid, people would go to the pub to hang out and now there's the option of going to coffee shops. They were more like delicatessens back then and you'd be going there specifically to eat lunch or something. The next big thing, online shopping and events like Black Friday. The rise of American e-commerce giants like Amazon has hit us real hard. Good, but hard. It has impacted European shopping habits like nothing else. And again, the plague we spoke about earlier, yeah, that made a lot of people turn to online shopping. Also, we heard the hype about Black Friday and we were like, mm, if it's so good that people are literally killing each other over it, maybe we should have that too. So now we do, and also Cyber Monday. I kind of think Black Friday and Cyber Monday are a little bit of a scam myself, because if you look hard enough, you will find those discounts throughout the year. Hint, hint, I need a sponsor like Honey or something on this channel. That would be really good. It would be a very organic sponsorship. Join channel membership. And finally, the number one thing that we have adopted from America, and I think this is only a good thing. It's personal development and self-help. The stigma of mental health conditions Wait, I'm gonna take that back. There is a little bit of a bad side to this. I'll get to it. The stigma of mental health conditions was massive up until 10 years ago. You could not say you suffered from a mental health condition in Europe and have people not look at you like... People literally associated it with being a crazy, unbalanced person. So you kept that shiz to yourself. The idea of therapy up until 10 years ago, that was like so American. You literally would say therapy in an American accent. Therapy. I'll go see my therapist. It was like a joke. Now it is way more common and encouraged. And I'd say that is in large part thanks to the internet. There is a huge emphasis globally on personal development, self growth and learning to be the best you, you can be, which might not be the best person in the world, but you're doing your best, you know? Books, workshops, motivational speakers, seminars we got them all they're usually american we usually import them in but we've also got a few of our own too now the downside to this is i've seen it for myself especially on an app like tiktok you see mental health conditions like a big one is adhd and people self-diagnosing when they don't have it they'll just start listing traits that are like identifiable in pretty much everyone and you'll start going hmm, maybe I have it. And the more you watch the videos, the more that feels reinforced, like you should self-diagnose yourself with that. Which belittles people who actually do have those mental health conditions and are struggling. But you know, that's just my thoughts. Let me know yours. Comment. See, I put it on the screen to make it easy for you to remember. Shout out today to a couple of very special people. I found on YouTube a crew so cool. The Karmic Goals Kang are the channel's special fuel. They support our channel with vibrant cheer, making Chewy's vet trips and treats appear. My hilarious crew are full of wit. They help me make rent and ain't that a hit. With laughs and love, they lift us up high. The Karmic Goals crew soar through the sky. The Karmic Goals crew in their own special way do comments and funnies that light up our day. Thank you so much, Karmic Goals crew. That's it for today. See you guys on the site. Bye.